right, hey, we're back with another episode. And today I'm going to talk with Brett Fairborn from Crew Tracks. Uh, we all know that I've talked a lot about in these episodes about why we need automation in our business, why we've got to be able to track things uh, better on the back end, and how that is going to help us separate ourselves in a market that is about to get a little bit more competitive. So, Brett, thanks for uh, joining me here today. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for having me. You're, you're also in the Utah. It seems like all the tech in the in the construction and roofing industry is coming out of that Utah area. So yeah. what part of Utah are you in? Are you uh, up towards Salt Lake or? Yeah, just about a half hour north of Salt Lake. And I was going to mention <laughs> earlier, we, I, we ran into another software provider at a conference in Cleveland and found out they're like kitty corner across the inter intersection <laughs> from us. <laughs> I don't know what it is about that area right now, but it is really yeah. funny how many companies that are coming out of that area that have a really, really strong focus. And it could be, I think just here in the West, we've seen so much more new construction than most other areas of the country that it does make some sense. There's just a lot of people here thinking about it. And, and let's chat about that for a minute because you've been with Crew Tracks for you said, going on six years. Crew Tracks has been around for what, I think about eight or nine years? Uh, actually, just about the same time I've been around. We okay. entered the app store in mid-2017. So I started okay. working with Crew Tracks kind of on the side for fun. And uh, once yeah. we became like a real product, I was like, all right, I want in. Get me on board. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, let's talk a little bit about what the origin story is here of Crew Tracks, how it got started, and then what the product is today and the problems that it solves for uh, construction professionals. Cool. Yeah. So Crew Tracks started initially as a custom uh, project for one contractor here in Utah. And, you know, once we got it all put together, you know, we kind of looked at each other and said, there's a lot of other people that need this, <laughs> right? So yeah. we've uh, kind of teamed up with that contractor to some extent, although he's, he's not really closely involved with our day-to-day. Our -day. um, and we just took it, you know, to a broader market. So the, you know, the main pain points we solve are really just like bottlenecks in operations, whether that's communication delays, you know, sometimes people are actually often people are still dealing with paperwork and so we're getting them off of paper. Um, but another pain point we hear is complicated software. You know, we get people switching from other products um, because especially our, our mobile interface, we really work hard to keep it simple. A lot of times for people in the office, they feel out of control, right? That you can't be present on all of the job sites at the same yeah. time. And we try to present an opportunity to kind of feel like you are, to have that live feedback from each job site really back of the house from a, is it really from an accounting perspective or is this more about equipment tracking and safety and in time tracking and those kind of things? It's really field management software. Got so, it. you know, okay. eliminating communication delays between the office and the field hmm. um, and eliminating paperwork in, in the field. So, you know, on the job site, as much as possible, we get the clipboard out of the foreman's hand and put an iPad in his hand instead, right? Nice. And is that, so that's around job assignments. That's around, I mean, do you have a safety component to this as well? Yeah. So we have a documents feature. Um, okay. I mean, by, by default, there's, you know, time and attendance, notes and photos, right. materials, equipment, production tracking, um, things like that. But then we have a documents component that's, it's kind of everything else. Like if there's something sure. that Crew Tracks doesn't provide and there's a certain, you know, whether it's the munici municipality you're in or um, just there's a certain uh, JHA or JSA that you like to use or yeah. whatever it is, if you've got your document that you need to use, we just make that digital. Um, and by the way, that's a service we offer as well as just preparing forms for digital use. Um, sometimes we'll do that for free just to help people get to the digital age. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and, and I mean, it, it's a real issue and it's not just an issue for the really small guys. I've got a client right now that is a larger, you know, construction company, big commercial construction company. We have tons and tons of clipboards. We're, we're currently working on a project with them right now. You know, we're just trying to figure out how to reduce the number of clipboards because yeah. what happens is, yes, the documents are being signed and they're being passed around. And we're talking about, you know, safety and, 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 and you know, doing our, our checks and inspections and all these kind of things, our truck walk arounds. The problem is, Nobody really investigates that stuff until there is a problem. Yes. And then that's the one day, right? It is. It's like you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll find 300 days worth of documents and the one day that it didn't get done is the yeah. day that the accident happens. So that compliance piece and that, that ability 
from you know the folks in the field and the folks at HQ to be able to look at what's happening in the field and yeah. see and make sure those do those documents are being completed and we're all in compliance and we don't have any safety issues or any concerns like that is a big deal. Yeah, yeah compliance, safety, um, liability mitigation, both in terms of injury, but also you know damage, just monetary liability, right? I was just talking to one of our um, scaffolding customers recently and he talked about how, I mean, <laughs> They broke one of the features of our software because they take so <laughs> many pictures, right? And to yeah. the point where we're like, oh crap, we can't handle all these pictures. <laughs> sure. But it's so useful, you know, it's in, in roofing as well. If you've got, you know, damage that you need to document for the insurance company or whatever, if, if you're doing that kind of work, those photos are are priceless. And but the example he shared was he said he hates metal panels because they dent so easily, right? <laughs> so he's he's careful to take pictures and they they have you know indicated which level it's on things like that so when someone says hey you damaged this panel on this level on this building he goes here's the photos from that level on that building here's the photo from before we started work that dent was already there so sorry yeah. we're not going to fix that right but i will tell you i can't tell you how many times i've heard particularly in the roofing industry from people that say the roofing trucks crack their driveway you know yeah. particularly on new construction it's like that, you know, they, they see that big truck where there's already, there's a, and if you don't have the pictures of it. Yeah. I mean, uh, how do you correct, prove that you didn't do it? Yeah. Correct. Concrete is a, a classic case. I mean, I don't know yeah. how many examples we have of someone's, and sometimes it's like on a, on a bigger job site, it's a different subcontractor. Like here's a picture of their truck on it the day after you poured it. Maybe exactly. you talk to those guys. <laughs> exactly. Right. It is that it, it's, it's not, it, you know, it's, it's not about you know, being right. It's just about proving the facts of the case. Yeah. And I don't think anybody wants to skirt responsibility for, right. you know, if we, if we, if we screw something up on a job site, we need to fix it, but let's not get blamed for things that we shouldn't have got blamed for in the first place. We know this is true when it comes to bigger commercial job sites. We know this is really true when it comes to residential, you know, yeah. it's like, a I've seen one, this happen so many times. Right, know? a big one for I mean, really for any size company, but um, for some of the smaller companies that we work with, uh, we'll do a photo in, photo out for the time clock, right? Yeah. So at the beginning of the shift, take a picture. End of the shift, take a picture. If there's any PPE you want to make sure they're wearing, have them put it on before they clock in, and you can prove right then they were wearing their gear, right? Yeah. But then I can't tell you how many times I've heard on Monday someone comes in and says, "I got injured on the job site on Friday." And they want to work oh, the yeah. claim, right? Well, let's check your clock out photo on Friday. Yeah. You're smiling. You look happy when you clocked out on Friday. We love you, man. We want to take care of you. But I don't think this happened on the job site. Yeah, it's really just about covering your ass, right? I think that's yeah. that's the most important part. So let's talk a little bit about um, what you're seeing out in the world, right? So you have, you know, you're you're a software company, so you're onboarding new clients, and for the most part, are they coming from other softwares or are they they're clipboard based and, and they're trying to bring this thing into the 20th century. Notice, like I said earlier, I didn't say 21st century. I'm let's just try to yeah. get to the 20th first. You know, there's, there's a little of both. Um, about five years ago, the, the big message that we would send, and, and I remember my, my first campaign I ran here was I hate paperwork in, in mm. quotes and it yeah. was attributed to your employees, right? <laughs> yeah. We all hate paperwork, but now it's, I mean, half and half, or maybe even leaning more towards, you know, people are switching from other softwares. A lot of companies, are using software nowadays. And I, I will say, I'll give some tough love to your audience. If you're not using software right now for time and attendance, for daily reporting, for what's happening on the job site, you're getting outperformed. Like Absolutely. you're going to get beat, you know? And so you, yeah. you've got to get, and the thing is it's, sometimes there's pushback because it feels like big brother, right? Like, and mm -hmm. you know, we have GPS features, for example, and it's like, you know, no one likes that. You're going to check my GPS location seriously. It, but until it saves your butt, right? Then you're going to love it to be able to say, I'm really glad we had this photo with this GPS stamp to show that we were on the other side of the street when that thing got damaged, right? Yeah. And it and it eliminates, I mean, sometimes there's pressure on the crew lead to, you know, a guy shows up at 8.15, ah, we'll call that 8 o'clock. Maybe he shows up at 8.30, ah, we'll still call that 8 o'clock. And it takes pressure off of the crew lead to be accurate and honest if it's like, you know what, I can't clock you in until you're present because I have to take a picture of you. So if you want to yeah. get paid starting at eight o'clock, just be here at eight o'clock. Makes total sense. So let's talk a little bit about how this can help improve the margins for jobs. And I've talked about this a lot, I think, in the episodes in the past about time tracking. And if, if it's something you're not doing right now, I am so big on time tracking in everything that I do. 
you know, I come from a background of, of doing Lean and Six Sigma in manufacturing and construction sites. And I can, I can show you the spreadsheets that tell you how many seconds it takes to hang a sheet of drywall. Well, why do I do that? Well, because I need to understand that information so that when I put together an estimate, I can give an accurate depiction of what the labor is going to be. And if I don't, after the fact, then go back and readjust that based upon the new conditions, uh, my estimates are going to be inaccurate. So let's yeah. talk a little bit about how time tracking comes into this. Man, I love what you just said about, you know, the number <laughs> of seconds it takes. Like we, we've got, you see everything from, you know, a guy's get the clock in and out and just allocate it to a job. That's fine. You know, we can do that. And that's a great start. Right. And, and we have job statuses. So you can say, you know, it's in the setup phase. It's in, you know, the cleanup phase, whatever, without allocating time to different items, you can have, sure. you know, different statuses, which is helpful. But then all the way down to what you said, someone who knows like, you know what, I can pay this many dollars and cents per whatever production unit you, you want to use, right? And then you can put your pay rates in, you can put your production rates in, and you can know every day, did I make or lose money on this job? And I, you know, I see, I see it with the you know, mom and pop shops who have just a couple people all the way up to you know, 500 employee companies where they can say, it's it's kind of fun actually if you have at least two crews um, to be able to pit them against each other. If you oh, have a, yes. a variance report going, like how much money did you make or lose today? And the thing is, there are perfectly valid reasons why you have a bad day, right? But those yes. valid reasons don't change the bottom line. And and it's nice to be able to see. Okay, well, let's see what we can do tomorrow to make up for the fact that the rain ruined our day or whatever. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what most people. And, and listen, I think when you track time, you have to understand standard deviation and you have to understand how that works. And you need to understand that there are circumstances and situations that will be the outliers. Of course there will. But most things fall on a bell curve, right? If, okay. if anybody's interested, there's this, I always keep one on my desk. It's called a, a Galton board, if you've never seen one of these before. But it talks oh, about standard cool. deviation. And it essentially, you put all these little beads down here. And you flip it over and guess what? Every single time, no matter what, it always forms a bell curve because math tells you that there's always going to be deviations on each end. But for the most part, you know, if I, if I track 10 times how long it takes to hang a sheet of drywall, I can come up with an estimate that's going to be pretty accurate about 80% of the time, 80 to 90% of the time. And that is really important, particularly when having those calculations, understanding how much time it takes is so critical right now when materials costs are going way up, right? So we yeah. have to be much more cautious with our estimates. But let's be honest, labor costs are way up too. Yeah. So if it used to take, you know, if it takes 10 minutes to hang a sheet of drywall, the cost of hanging a sheet of drywall has not just gone up because of the price of materials, the labor costs more now too. So uh, it's important to understand these things because if you don't understand these things, what you're gonna have happen is you're gonna grow into a bigger business and your revenue might look good, but your margin will never be there because you truly yeah. don't understand how to make money. And and that's really hard. It, it's really hard, particularly for old timers. There's a lot of, old, a lot of a lot of gray hair in this industry, mm -hmm. right? And my, we think my lighting we know. is dark enough you can't see yeah. mine. I look, <laughs> right. I look so young right now. This is great. You, you do look really good. <laughs> I got to give you credit. <laughs> um, but, but it is really true. We know, especially us gray hairs, we look at stuff and we say, well, you know, hey, man, I, I know what this costs to do. Well, does it really? And let's, let's really dial it back in and let's understand. Yeah. And maybe there's been a code change and now we have to hang things a little different or we have to do a different screw pattern. Whatever that is, it's important to understand those things so that you can bring that back into the fold. And, yeah. and being able to track time is really important. Yeah, and I, I wanna give a shout out to those who right now are feeling like, <laughs> they're listening to this and thinking that feels like a far off goal to track yeah. to that you know level of uh, detail, variance reporting day to day. That is like level 10, you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. it's okay to get to level one and level two first. Do, do, sure. just, just some time in attendance don't even have to allocate time to a certain task. Just clock in and out accurately. That will save you a ton of money if your guys are rounding their time, right? Yeah. And then and then the notes and photos, right? If you have if you have uh, imagery going back and forth between the field and the office, whether it's plans and drawings going out or it's just photos of damage or issues coming in, and you're not chasing it down on who who texted that to who, what email is it in, right? Just having it in a central location. 
just that does so much to eliminate um, delays and bottlenecks that can often slow down where it's like, you know, what happened yesterday? Why didn't I hear about that? You know, the time rounding is so easy to point to and kind of yeah. diagnose and estimate. This is how much money you will save by eliminating that. But there's all these other operational delays that happen when you're not in the 20th or 21st century. <laughs> That's right. Right. That the other guys are going to outperform you. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you just start with simply having a centralized location for photos, right? Mm. Just start something, get it digital so that you can eliminate some of those delays. And it really does impact the bottom line. I mean, immediately. Yeah. Well, I always say in my consulting practice that people only respect what you inspect. So if you don't inspect something like time, they don't respect it. They'll always fudge on both ends. If you don't actually look at it and point out things and occasionally, you know, pull up the payroll files and ask questions and do those kind of things. Uh, so, so that's really critically important, you know, to your business to make sure that you are inspecting these things. And the reality is if you have no way to track it, <laughs> there's no way to inspect it. So you've yeah. got to have that, that, that methodology in place. And you're absolutely right. You know, you, you're, you're never going to get to level 10 uh, right out of the gate and nobody really right. should try to do that. I don't look at goals when it comes to software and improvement in particular inside of a company as uh, this is a happy Gilmore par five and we're trying to get a hole in one. <laughs> it, it just doesn't work that way, right? If you've ever played golf, you, you don't shoot for the pin for, in most of the cases. You, you lay up your shots, right? You get a little bit farther down the fairway and then you take another shot and you approach closer and closer. And that even comes true when it comes to time tracking. I'm not big on it, standing there every single day and timing things. But once in a while, once in a quarter, once at once, you know, every six months, say, hey, guys, I'm going to come up with a stopwatch today. And I really want to want to understand what it takes us to do things so our estimates improve. Yeah. And that, and guys will get that, right? So that we can yeah. make more money as a business, right? Yeah. We haven't, I, I don't know, maybe, you know, and it's important to add all those things together because we all know in drywall, let's just talk about drywall for a second. I know this is a roofing podcast, but the, the work on the back end and the work on the front end, the, the better you hang that drywall on the front end and mud and tape it on the front end, the less work there is in the back end. So it might not be about speed at all. It might be about slow it down and do it a little better because our end result will be better. And I think the same holds true with roofing. We Sometimes we think going faster is better, but actually being inside that range of getting the quality is really what we're looking for. Yeah. I think it's worth mentioning also that um, whenever you introduce something like this uh, to your guys who are, you know, boots on the ground doing the work or boots on the roof <laughs> doing the work. Yeah, right. Um, you will often get some pushback. Right? And you have to communicate the value to them. Um, and one of uh, two, you know, things that jump out right away is what I already mentioned about relieving pressure of hooking up your buddy who's on your mm -hmm. crew, right? If everyone has to be accurate and honest and you, it's, it's just easy, right? Um, and the other is this presents an opportunity to really reward your good employees, right? And I'll tell you right now, the ones who push back most against a system like this are the ones who are stealing time from you. Taking the advantage of it. It's yeah. always, always, always the case. I wrote out some accountability stuff a few years ago to a manufacturing company. And uh, in the rollout, we had a woman who had been there 20 years. She literally stormed out and quit. And she said, I will not be held accountable to this company. And I'm thinking for 20 years, she's worked here. She wasn't accountable. She wasn't yeah. accountable. She wasn't <laughs> accountable for her work. You know, and everybody's freaking out. What are we going to do without her? And I said, I'm going to come back in a week. And then you tell me. And I came back a week later and they're like, our lives are so much better now. Yeah. Right. Because she was creating barriers right. in the process. I also say when it comes to this, I totally agree with you. Change management is really, really tough, particularly in the construction industry. But people that write the plan don't fight the plan. So get them involved in it really, really early on. Help yes. them understand, understand not just, oh, we weren't going to track time. And no, that's not what it's about. Let's talk about the outcome here, guys. And the outcome is we get more jobs done more quickly. We do them more accurately. We have better estimates going forward, become a more profitable company. That translates into better bonuses, more job opportunities, more growth opportunities, management, leadership opportunities. So we need you guys to embrace this because the reality is the way we're doing it right now just doesn't work. Yeah. And when they see that, 
they'll get it and they'll still might fight you a little bit. But again, if if they're involved in the early stages of that and they're nodding their heads, at least partially, they're they're much more less likely to fight it than yeah. uh, you know, and, and, it, and to your point, it's a great way to reward people too. Right. You know, leaderboards, yeah. leaderboards mm-hmm. are a really good thing. I use a lot of leaderboards in companies that I do with, hey, what's our utilization of this? You know, Joe, Joe right. logged in every day this week and that you get, you get into the pool for lottery tickets or whatever that might be, make it fun, make it exciting. And I think people are, are more prone to uh, want to help you roll it out. Yeah. And I, I want to give credit to, um, you know, I don't want to demonize people who push back against this, right? When yeah. I say it, those yeah. are the people that are stealing time. I, um, one customer that we worked with larger customer, they had like 20 crews, right? And when they wanted to roll out crew tracks, all 20 foremen banded together and said, we all quit if you get crew tracks. <laughs> it's pretty tough to replace 20 foremen, right? Yeah. Like impossible. And these were good foremen. And yeah. you know why they were fudging their time a little bit? Because they felt like they deserved it. Mm. And yeah. they were right. They did huh. deserve it. They were doing mm. great work, you know? Um, of course, they should have done it honestly. But the leadership yeah. of this company was really, really smart. And they're like, you know what, guys? You deserve every dime that you've been paid. So what we're going to do is we're going to put you all on salary. We've done the numbers. This is what you're making. We're giving each of you a $5,000 raise for now, probably more to come because Crutrax is going to help us become more efficient as a business, right? So congratulations. You all got a raise. You're all on salary. You're clocking in and out times don't matter, but use Crutrax for the rest of your crew so that we can really tighten up our numbers, win more bids, et cetera. They started saving immediately in the first year over $150,000 on on labor because of the time, you know, five and 10 minutes every day of the year, that adds up to a lot of money. And so they, and all of a sudden they've got a surplus, right? And they can bid a little tighter. They can reward their employees a little bit more. Um, But you know, those, those foremen, they're good foremen. They deserve the money they were making. And that was smart leadership to say, all right, guys, look, we don't want this to hurt you. So we're yeah. going to take care of you, but you got to help us out too, because this this system is going to take care of the company and we're going to be better because of it. That's amazing. So let's talk a little bit about success and, and uh, how, you know, that, that's a great example there. What What is a, what's a successful implementation of crew track look like? I mean, is this, does this work for the, for the five employee business and does it work for the 500 or where, where at in that range do you tend to fall? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I'd say our, our sweet spot is probably 50 to hundred employees. Okay. Um, yeah. That's for, for me, for, from our yeah. side, because the larger companies and I'm including 50 to hundred employees in, in larger, um, yeah. they're a little stickier for us, you know, smaller sure. agile companies, they can implement one system and then change their mind and implement another one. Right. Um, but crew tracks works great. We have a minimum of a hundred dollars a month, right? So if okay. you got one person and you just want to track yourself, cool, hundred dollars a month, yeah. all the way up to you know we have people who are paying tens of thousands of dollars. I think our largest has like two thousand employees, you know. Oh. So, but again, our sweet spot is probably, I'd say maybe even go up to one hundred and fifty and under. It's kind of our sweet okay. spot. That which which makes sense. I mean, that's where the majority of the business is, right? And the guys that are over that, for the most part, you know, they've. They probably tried, they probably figured something out long ago that works for them. And yeah. sometimes abandoning that is more difficult than anything, right? right? Yeah. How about integrations? Let's talk about that for a moment. I mean, because you're doing the payroll piece, you're tracking, you're doing some of these daily reporting stuff and field tracking. Is that is that then moved into the accounting software on its own? Can you run payroll out of crew tracks? How does that work? Yeah, great question. Uh, no, you can't run payroll out of crew tracks, um, but we save our customers a ton of time on payroll. There, there was one, I went and visited one of our customers to help them get onboarded and their um, payroll person, the, the president of the company said, Jenny, how much time is crew track saving you? How many hours per week? And she goes, two days. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Um, especially if you're coming from paperwork. Uh, so we'll work with I mean, pretty much any uh, accounting software that, that you can think of. There's one or two that's a little tougher for us to work with, but we have a few guys on our integrations team that move mountains. Um, so if there's, in fact, one of our customers just recently said he was coming from another software and there was a certain report that that software spit out that he wanted crew tracks to spit out and we just didn't have that report. Hmm. So we went to our integrations team and we said, look, these are the requirements of the customer. This is how he wants the data to look. And in the words of our customer, <laughs> He said, 
you guys are just like, hold my beer. We can do one better. <laughs> <laughs> so we got, you know, the report that That's his good. old software used to spit out, plus some other detail that he wanted to see just for the health of the business. So That's yeah, awesome. we'll, we'll work with any system, uh, whether it's importing a bid from a bidding system or sending information into accounting or payroll or whatever. Nice. And how do people find out more about uh, CrewTracks? CrewTracks.com. And it's, there's no nice. clever spelling. There's no X. <laughs> Just right. Uh, yeah. Anymore. Right? Yeah, you, you got, you got, you definitely got the right uh, URL. Hey, Brett, thank you so much for being here. This is exciting to talk to you and learn a little bit more about crew tracks and uh, talk about how you can build more efficiency in the, your construction and roofing company. So if you have a need for this type of software, reach out to the guys at crew tracks guys and gals at crew tracks and uh they can get you a demo and uh and get you get you rolling cool right. Derek, thank you so thank much you, this has been fun you got it it has thanks Brad. i appreciate it